Hi, this is the Polybrute, Artoria's flagship polyphonic synth. It has six analog stereo voices, but they're not the main thing that makes it unique. Rather, it's the morph feature that doesn't crossfade between two presets, but rather morphs the actual parameters that make up a sound. Plus it has a few expressive controllers that make it stand out. A capacitive touch ribbon. And a touche like Morphe or Morphe as I call it. At the end of this video, I'll play about 70 of its presets, but I'll start with a detailed review of all of Polybrute's features and talk about their pros and cons. Let's get started. I'll start with an overview. Polybrute is a six voice stereo by timbral synth, meaning that you can split and layer the six voices between two different sounds or two different presets. The oscillators, filters, and the entire signal path up until the effects is all analog. Each of the six voices includes a set of two oscillators, a sub oscillator, some wave shaping perks, and a noise generator. Two filters, Steiner Parker and Ladder three envelopes and three LFOs, a mod matrix to route a bunch of sources to up to 32 destinations, practically any button or control on the panel, as well as a few others, and three main effects, modulation, delay, and reverb. Aside from the morph feature, Polybrute has a host of expressive controls. You saw the ribbon before. It goes across two and a half octaves from here to here. And this Morphe or Morphe, which is both an XY touch controller and pressure controller. It also has a motion recording function to quickly create custom envelopes or LFOs. And aside from the special things, it has the usual suspect, a keyboard with velocity sensitivity and channel aftertouch, a pitch bend wheel and mod wheel. Unlike the matrix route, by the way, the panel doesn't tilt up. The overall build though seems very solid. It seems built and weighs like the proverbial tank. Polybrute also has an arpeggiator and sequencer with up to 64 steps and three lanes of motion sequencing and an interesting arpeggiator sequencer combo function. Arturia also provide a software editor for the Polybrute for two-way editing of presets. So you can see everything you do, including morph on the plugin and you can edit things on the plugin on your computer and have that impact the Polybrute. Continuing with the overview, Polybrute has a black and white OLED screen clearly viewable from any angle with a menu system to access quite a few parameters within the synth itself. You can see you can dive into quite a few menus here, but that actually isn't necessary. It may be a little bit hard to see on video, but a lot of the knobs and buttons have a little orange hollow circle next to them. So if you wanna access, say, the morph settings, you could use a menu to access that, but you could also just hold this button, turn the knob, and it'll jump directly to the right menu. Same goes for the buttons. So if I wanted to edit this LFO's sync, I could use settings and press this button, but for the buttons, you can also press them for about a second and you go to that menu directly. Once you enter this more settings page, you use these buttons below the screen to edit the various parameters. Finally, for the overview, while the core sound engine oscillators and filters are analog, Polybrute is all digitally controlled. You can store up to 768 presets on board in eight banks of 96 presets. With a nifty snapshot feature, it sends and accepts MIDI control so you can back up your presets on a computer. Let's finish the overview by looking at connectivity. Polybrute has two stereo unbalanced quarter inch outputs, MIDI in, out, and through, analog, clock in and out, and a USB type B connector. There's no need for a power adapter, so that's one less thing to worry about. The headphone jack is up front where it should be, and it has its own independent level control, though that's over here. There are also three pedal inputs, sustain and two expression inputs, and while we're looking at the back, there is a memory protection switch in case you're worried about someone overriding your patches. All right, so let's look at an int preset and take a look at a few of the details. So first and foremost is morph. Now, like I mentioned, it's not a simple crossfade. So here, for example, oscillator one in preset A or morph state A is a sawtooth and it morphs into a pulse wave. 
But I could also say, pitch it down for morph B, and then when I turn morph B to morph A, it'll change both the pitch and the wave shape. Now you may have noticed it didn't go through all the pitches. You can edit the morph parameters here. The default is set to octave fifths. I could just set it to say continuous, in which case the morph will be continuous. Say, make it chromatic. And a few other cool options like, say, go through a minor triad. Let's maybe set B to a larger range. Now we could keep going with this. Let's maybe not go to such an extreme. Let's keep changing B or A, by the way, but let's say maybe close the filter a bit and add resonance. Okay, so now it'll morph between those two positions. Let's say we go to the mod matrix and add an LFO here. Let's take LFO one, maybe add a little bit of vibrato to the pitch of the oscillator. Okay, so now I've got vibrato on morph A and it morphs out on morph B. And yeah, that means that you can set different mod depths per morph. So if I wanted this to be more extreme in morph B, I could say increase the amount here to total craziness. And then as I morph back to A, the vibrato will be more moderate. Aside from the knobs, sliders, and mod matrix depths, you can also morph some of the button controls and menu settings, but it's not as straightforward as choosing A or B with a morph button and changing the parameter, at least not in the current version of the firmware. So let's say that I wanted to change the waveform of LFO1 from say a sine wave in morph A to something else in morph B, I'd need to press the morph button, then choose edit B, then choose the waveform that I wanted, let's say, make it a downward ramp. And now as I exit this, you'll see that, you'll see that the LFO wave shape crossfades as well. I'll put an overlay on screen showing which parameters need the morph button to be pressed to be changed. Things, like I said, like the LFO wave shape or these controls, which VCOs get routed to which filters. And by the way, this morph knob itself uh, is a modulation destination. So I could say, take LFO two, and assign it in the mod matrix. Let's take an empty slot, say number four, assign that to morph, then hook up LFO2 to that slot, increase the amount. So you can modulate morph itself at pretty high rates. And just to round out this discussion, you could, if you wanted, load up an entire preset into say morph A, and then go into here and I'll go into pick B, go into any one of the preset banks. Let's go into this preset that I played earlier and then load either the A preset or the B preset from that preset. So this is my bass sound and this is what this preset is doing, which is something completely different, but we can morph between the two. And as you can hear, that ain't no crossfade. By the way, if I head out to the mod matrix, you could see how Polyboot combined these two presets together. So you can't actually morph from one mod matrix to a completely different one. The destinations and sources need to be shared. It's always nice to look at the numbers on the mod matrix as everything changes. So one thing about morph that's a little bit odd in the way that it works now, if you change a parameter when it's either in morph A or in morph B, then the way that it works is very intuitive. You set a destination, you set a source, and you morph between them. So this is the value all the way clockwise, and this is morph A, the value all the way counterclockwise. However, if you put morph somewhere in the middle and edit a parameter knob, you can see both A and B change at the same time, which for tuning can lead to a very confusing result. So just be aware of this if you want to change just A or B instead of both.
So that's Morph, something that to my knowledge doesn't exist on any other analog synth. The only places I've seen something similar is Octatrax Scenes and the Locks function on Machine. If you're familiar with others, please leave a comment below. Next up is the Morphe, which I guess is supposed to be pronounced like Touche, but I just can't help calling it Morphe, so I hope you don't mind. Anyway, Morphe is a three-axis controller. You can see what it's doing here on the display as I move my finger across the capacitive touch wood, I guess. And as I press it up and down, you can see the motion here as well. It has three modes. You can either send it to the matrix, X, Y, and Z parameters to modulate anything you want. You could use it to randomize the arpeggiator and sequencer. And then there's the morph function where the Z axis still goes to the mod matrix, but X and Y control the morph of pitches and levels separately. So let's look at this. Say with a simple preset, I'll turn on oscillator two, and let's maybe detune that slightly here, and then in B, go all out. So if I use the morph knob, I'll change both the pitch and the timbre or wave shape of the oscillators, right to square and saw, but I could separate the two out here, moving left and right, We'll change just the timbre moving up and down. We'll change just the pitch. I could move in both directions as well. And if I wanted, I could combine that, of course, with a Z action. Let's go to the mod matrix, assign slot four to the cutoff, then assign Z to the cutoff on the matrix, give it a mod depth. And now we have expressive control across all three axes. The Morphe itself, by the way, has a few modes. A temporary mode, where you can get this kind of effect, and then to change its modes again, setting, and just touch it. And you've got tap, hold, and scan, and hold scan. We won't go through all of these. They basically control how it goes back and forth or stays in the same spot. Next up that's special about Polybrute is the ribbon, something that you might miss when first looking at it. The ribbon is this groove on the wood panel. Here too, we've seen things like these on anything from the CS80 to recently on the Hydra synth. So while not exclusive, it still is a fantastic expressive feature that you won't find in many synths. Now the ribbon is just a mod source like any other source. So I could, for example, point it to the filter cutoff as well. Let's just increase the amount. And this has the same modes that you saw before. Tap, hold, scan, and slow scan. So now I can have it start anywhere I want to open or close the filter. I don't have to start in the center. But I think one of the coolest uses for this is to point the ribbon to the pitch of one or all of the oscillators. That's pitch global here in this case. So we'll go from ribbon to pitch global and set a mod depth. Mod depth isn't semitones. I found that for um, for this to track according to the keyboard, 26 is the mod amount that works. Anyway, when I do that, I can use the keyboard as a guide to bend pitch here. So say I wanna go from C to G, I would just follow or track the keyboard to do that. And I could start anywhere I wanted. So I could start here, still track the same distance. And this works polyphonically as well. Moving on, the next thing that I think is pretty special about Polybrute is that it's stereo. Now it has two stereo modes. You could either have the voices themselves, the entire voice in stereo, or split the filters up and have one pan right and one pan left. So let's start with voice panning, that's pretty easy. As I turn this knob clockwise, you get more panning per voice. But if I change the stereo settings, which you guessed it, I do by pressing setting and touching this knob, and I go into voice and filter pan mode, this is where things get interesting. Now we didn't talk about the filters yet, I promise we will. There are two of them. And let's just maybe put these more or less in the same position. Anyway, when we go into stereo mode and the filters are routed in series, then the entire voices get panned. 
But if I gradually move them to parallel routing, then each filter will go to a different ear. So maybe take down the resonance on this one and increase resonance here. So you obviously need to have headphones for this. But you should be hearing this in stereo, then moving the filters together in stereo is a very special effect. And you can always go back to just panning the voices in stereo with this knob. A really neat feature, I think. Next unique little feature is this motion recorder. It's basically a custom LFO or envelope that you can program just by touching a knob. It only applies to one knob though per preset. You just arm it to record and then press the key and start recording. And then I can have it either play once when I hit a key. That's it, that's the motion. And I could change its rate. Or I could just have this motion loop. And you can speed it up or slow it down. The last general feature I want to talk about before we dive into the specifics of the oscillators and filters and so on is the different split and layer modes. Let's go into this preset again because we're familiar with it. So I could play it across the keyboard and have it morph to this. Or just put it in split mode and then play this here and this timbre here. I could also layer two different sounds, so let's maybe go for this one. Okay, this morphs from this to this. I can just hit layer and then play them both. Yep, very nice. Notice though that when you layer presets, you only get three effective voices instead of six. Now one cannot demo a polyphonic multi-oscillator synth without testing the unison mode. Unfortunately, there's no unison spread function here. You can detune the oscillators a bit. But if you wanted to spread the voices out, there's no direct knob for it. You could, however, go into the mod matrix and route the voices parameter to pitch. So that could take you from a nice fat 12 oscillator unison super saw. to a Lex Luthor song. So those are the fancy features. Let's maybe take a look at some of the basic ones, oscillators and filters. Like I mentioned, there are two oscillators. They can morph from saw to triangle, and then from any one of these, the sum of these two, to a square with variable pulse width, which can be modulated, of course, if you want. Oscillator 1 has a metalizer function, which by default only applies to the triangle, like the classic Arturia synths. So it doesn't by default apply to the square or to the saw. But if we head out here and change the setting to all waves, which frankly I think should be the default, then you can metalize both the saw and the pulse. a great way to quickly get nice metallic sounds. Oscillator 1 can be synced to oscillator 2 for the classic oscillator sync sounds. And this sync can go from soft to hard sync. So let's take this down. Now this always sticks to semitones, so this is better modulated than moved manually. But you've got various degrees of hard to soft sync. You've also got FM from oscillator 2 to oscillator 1. Let's maybe choose this. And... Uh, 
two parameters that impact the character of FM is both the mod depth and the relative tuning between the oscillators. And you can change the shape of oscillator too. Add a sub oscillator to it. I'll change the character of the FM as well. Obviously the ratio between the two matters as well for FM. But yeah, nice temporal options here. Let's talk about oscillator two while we're at it. Like I mentioned, it has a sub oscillator option. It has the same shape options, by the way, basic shape options as oscillator one, saw to triangle to pulse with pulse width, but it also has a sub oscillator option, which we'll hear better if we pitch the oscillator up. Now, by default, if you crank the sub oscillator up fully clockwise, it will completely replace the waveform of oscillator two. But if you don't like that, that's a setting you can change in the settings as well. Aside from the two oscillators, you also have a noise generator with the variable color. And with that, we can move on to the filters. You've got two of them, a Steiner Parker 12 dB per octave filter and a ladder filter with a 24 dB per octave slope. Like I mentioned, you can route them either in series Steiner into ladder or in parallel where they work alongside each other, either in mono or stereo. The ladder filter is just a low pass filter with resonance, of course. The nice thing about it is that it doesn't lose too much bass when you crank up resonance. Unlike regular ladder filters. And it has a nice distortion function as well. With distortion and without. Pushes it into the VCA. So that's the ladder filter. Like I mentioned earlier in the mixer, you could route the VCOs either to both filters, none of them the Steiner filter or just the ladder filter. Let's check out the Steiner filter. So it has its own character of resonance and a 12 dB per octave slope. And it morphs from a low pass mode to notch mode in the middle between low pass and high pass to high pass and there's a nice detent here then goes into bend pass mode with resonance and it has Arturia's famous brute vector which is feedback into the filter I quite like the distortion and it looks like you can't apply it to the Steiner filter, but you can, of course, because they're routed in series. You also have two audio rate filter modulation options. The LFOs do go sort of into audio rates at about 100 hertz, but if you want really fast modulation, you've got a VCO2 to VCF option, VCF1 option with this knob. Again, really sweet. Unfortunately, though, there's no way to route VCO2 or VCO1 to the ladder filter. You only have a noise option for that. It also sounds nice, but uh, a different character, I think, than, than uh, Oscillator FM. But you do have that if you want to add grittiness to your sound. And the color of the noise matters here too. To round out the filter options, let's just route both oscillators into both of them. You have joint control of both cutoffs. With this, the filters will track the keyboard if you want. Let's turn down the oscillators. The filters are playable. The Steiner filter, slightly less so per voice. That's just par for the course, I think, for Steiner filters and the ladder filter slightly more. So not precise, but this is an analog synth. 
So those are the two filters, both have a direct knob for VCF modulation from the VCF envelope. So good a time as any to talk about the envelopes. So simple attack, decay, sustain, release envelopes for the filter and VCA with a velocity control as well, which is nice, direct velocity control. And then there's an additional third mod envelope that can be routed to anything else using the mod matrix. And it has a delay stage, a fifth delay stage before the ADSR. So nice filter envelope. Here, there are additional features here if you like in the settings. This is the default envelope and there's a more percussive one. If you like, by the way, you can loop the envelopes. So you can have the modulation repeat twice. Or three times. Or just have them loop. And you could also have velocity impact the envelope speed. So if I hit it lightly, I'll get a fast envelope. If I hit it hard, I'll get a slower one. You can obviously control this. Let's move on to the LFOs. LFO one and two are very similar. So let's say that I wanted to modulate filter cutoff here. I would go into the mod matrix, add this as a destination. You saw me do this before, let's say route LFO one to it and maybe choose a reasonable rate and depth. There are different shapes, triangle, square, ramp down, ramp up, sample and hold or random, and a slewed random. The LFOs can be either free running and in sync for all six voices, free running for all six voices, but not in sync or triggered every time you press a key individually per voice. And the shift functions here are for sync and a few more options here. LFO three is an attack decay LFO with flexible curves. Let me just exit this. So either exponential or logarithmic curves. And you can change its symmetry without impacting its rate. There's a cross mod option with LFO1 and you can have it just work as an envelope if you liked. Run once. So those are the LFOs and envelopes. Let's talk about the mod matrix. We've been using it quite a lot. So you pretty much saw how it works. You've got a list of sources here, destinations here, which you assign by simply holding an empty slot or a full one and turning the knob that you want to modulate. So if I wanted to modulate both filters here, the master cutoff, I could do that and maybe assign the ladder cut off to this. You can see eight modulation destinations at a time and you've got four pages of mod destinations in the matrix. So if we go to a preset that has a bit more going on, that's what a mod matrix can look like. Now I've long been a fan of matrices like these that show you all the modulation nodes at a glance. Well, at least all those that are on the current page, but that's good enough. One thing that would be nice is if the mod matrix had different colors and intensities for positive and negative mod depths. This is actually done quite nicely in the software. I'll just show you the matrix again. So as we morph, you can see the numbers change on the grid. Think if these had totally different colors for positive and negative mod depths, it would be useful. Okay, let's move on down the synth. I'll go back to a default preset. Let's talk about the effects section. So you've got three effects, modulation, delay, and reverb modulation. Let's start with chorus. Nice stereo effect. To an increased modulation. And there's a phaser option. Then Alt shows you a few other options. Nice, ring mod. Bit crusher. Soft 
furniture. Please furniture. And down sampler. Which loves a resonant filter, by the way. For those vowel or formant like yais. Anyway, those are the modulation effects. Then there's delays, which a nice bucket brigade delay. This is digital, but still works nicely. And there's ping pong. And then here too, a few alternative options. Long delay, if you want to use this as sort of like a mini looper. And there's a few other options. Car plus strong. For very short delays. I won't go through everything. Let's take a listen to the reverbs. You've got damping control. And time as well. Nice long haul. Dreamy Shimmer. Okay, let's talk briefly about the arpeggiator and sequencer. They're what can be expected. Arpeggiator has a hold function, a few play modes, including Arturia's generative pattern mode, where a new sequence is generated every time you need to be in arpeggiator mode to control this. So you can see here, I've got a sequence length of 16 steps. Let's maybe shorten this to um, six steps so we get a tighter pattern. So that's one pattern and a different pattern. If I like this pattern, I could copy it to the sequencer. I won't go over this in depth. Let's talk about the sequencer very briefly. Just hit record and play a sequence. And I can determine sequence length here as well. Straightforward. You can replace notes if you want. And sequence polyphonically, of course. And I could mute or unmute steps if I wanted. And uh, yeah, a few other options. One of which is, of course, modulation. So if I go into modulation here and hit record, I can start automating up to three parameters. You can see I recorded that here. Um, we could you know, modulate anything else. Let's hit record and say change the timbre. You can see that added here. Let's change a third parameter. Why not? Let's add distortion. Oh, I'm gonna hit record. Okay, ladder drive, and you can easily erase these and put something else instead. So there are three modulation lanes and you've got sequences that can be up to 64 steps long. And then a third sequencing or arpeggiating option is the matrix arp, which you get to by holding these two buttons. Let's go into notes and steps one to eight. So this lets you set different rhythms and a manual play order for notes or for chords. So if I hit a chord, then I've got the order of the notes in the chord. It is an arpeggiator overall, but I can sequence those any way I wanted. Like this, including chords. I could make this rhythmic by eliminating steps. I won't demonstrate everything now. You've got slide and accent options, and you've got that in the main sequencer as well. And you can copy this to the sequencer too, if you like. A few miscellaneous functions. One of my favorite features here 
if you change a preset by mistake, right? So we've got this lovely arpeggiated pattern we created, and then we want to move to this preset, and we didn't save the old presets, typically that would be lost. Luckily, if you hit settings and save, you can roll back to the previous snapshot, our lovely preset, and then save that. And you can also create your own snapshots just by hitting save. Shout out to a few more features. It's nice that you've got direct control over what the mod wheel controls. You can route it to the matrix, but you can also have it go directly to cutoff, to vibrato, or to the amount of LFO1. One last interesting feature if you're short on ideas, go to one of the presets. Let's just go to this one. Then go to settings and preset info and hit generate and it will jumble it up a bit. And uh, sometimes it's similar, sometimes it's not. Let's try this one more time. Preset info, generate. Don't always get what you want, as the song says, but if you try sometimes, you might get a starting point for an idea you can develop. So that's it for what Polybrute does. Let's talk about the pros and cons. The most important thing is how it sounds, and that is, of course, subjective. I play about 70 presets after this pros and cons segment. Check out the timeline for that, so hopefully you'll have enough ammo to judge for yourself. Personally, I think both the analog and digital sides sound fantastic. Beyond that, the morph function is making my other synths very jealous right now. I think it's extremely inspiring as a sound design tool. I review a lot of synths on this channel and it's been a while since a feature pleasantly surprised me this much. Beyond that, the ribbon is useful and fun. The Morphe or Morphe is an excellent addition. The Z-axis, or bouncy pressure sensor in particular, is a unique expressive tool that gives you more control compared to the relatively short movement range that's available in the aftertouch function. So those are the pros. What are the cons? As usual, I like to split my cons into hardware and firmware cons because the hardware ones aren't likely to change and the firmware ones might. On the hardware side, for a flagship synth, six voices is a bit limiting. Obviously, additional voices would have meant a higher cost, especially analog ones, so there's a balance that needs to be made between price and voices, but it would have been nice to have an option to get maybe one with more voices at a higher cost. Beyond that, I think that as we see more hybrid synths with digital oscillators, it would have been nice to see a micro freak like digital oscillator here alongside the analog ones for wavetables and sample playback. Finally, on the hardware side, I love the ribbon, but it would have been nice to see it span across all the octaves rather than just two and a half octaves in the middle. For simple modulation and pitch bends, it's fine, but I really like it as a theremin-like instrument and it would have been nice to give it a broader range so you could access it where your hands are rather than just in the middle. Not to mention allocate a different timbre to it compared to the keyboard. That would be nice and I think that could be possible in software. On the firmware or software side, meaning things that I hope will be added in a firmware update, I think a simple one to add would be an indication of true parameter values on the screen, as well as morph A and morph B values. I mentioned this earlier. You see this really nicely in the software. And it would be nice to just see it here on screen. I also mentioned this earlier about morph. I think it's a little bit ambiguous if you change values when you're in the middle as opposed to A or B. It would be nice to have a mode that doesn't change both A and B if you change a parameter when you're in the center spot. And it would be nice if you could just change everything by being either in spot A or spot B without having to go into the edit A or edit B sections in this menu. As for the mod matrix, like I mentioned, it's great. It would be nice to have a color indication for negative or positive mod depth, as well as the actual mod depth with the intensity of the LED. And then one other thing I'd like to see is a separate arpeggiator or sequencer for each of the split. If you're in split mode, currently you can only have one ARP or sequencer running on only one split. So that's it for Polybrute. Flagship synths are often compared to muscle cars. To me, it's less about the car and more about where you go with it. And with the expressive controls, and in particular the morph feature, I found myself going places I've never been to, which is ultimately what you expect when considering a new synth. 
Beyond that, stay tuned for the presets if you want plenty of ideas on what to do with all these envelopes, LFOs, and mod matrix nodes. Check out my ever-expanding book available to the good people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the notification bell after subscribing to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.